Did you manage to get everything? We did. Here you go, Vincent. Everything seems to be in order. Here. This disc has all of Hayden's research notes, data collation algorithms, and probably lots on your creation, Turing. It should be everything myself and Melody agreed upon. Until she added an amendment while you were out. Frankly, it's no skin off my back. Here. It's my Parallax Employee Badge. It should allow you access to their networks in case there's anything I've missed. You'll want to use that sooner rather than later. I'm not wasting any time leaving and Parallax is pretty fast to revoke security. There's no way Hayden's clearance still works. And with that, I'm going to get the hell out of this country. The credit should tide me over until the heat dies down and I liquefy my shares through some relays. Ah, I suppose I owe you that much. Buckle up, this could get heavy. Parallax is about to launch a new service they're calling Big Blue. At least, that's the project name. Who knows what the marketing guys will come up with for the public. They're not even announcing the launch. This shit is dead quiet. Let me explain why. It's a distributed intelligence. Like, okay, in every way that Hayden built Turing to be elegant, efficient, and human-like, Big Blue is ham-fisted, bloated, and sterile. They didn't pull Hayden into the project. He's smart, but he's immune to corporate politics. As a result, Big Blue is far less elegant than anything Hayden would make. It lacks his artistry, and it's downright terrifying. It squats on the mesh like a spider and uses the spare processing power and memory from every ROM on the network to handle its intelligence processing. It doesn't have much personality, but it's very smart. Big Blue is going to be embedded directly into the network and then self-modified to apply even more efficient algorithms as it develops them in machine time. Look, if you access every ROM, then you have access to every human and every bit of their own personal data associated with them. I don't want you to take what I'm saying the wrong way. And this is just me putting the pieces together. Hayden was about to publish his creation of Turing. His findings, as I'm sure you're aware of, would have raised many moral and ethical questions about the advent of machine intelligence. I mean, some of the brightest minds ever have tried to warn humankind away from building real AI. Hawking, Musk, Gates, and the list goes on. The public is likely to be nervous and legislators even more so. Parallax is banking on being able to launch Big Blue quietly and quickly before the public has a chance to react. Before any counter movement can pick up steam. Every eye on the discovery of machine intelligence works against Parallax. Every new discovery only serves to paint Big Blue as more controversial, more dangerous. Honestly, they probably pressured Hayden to drop his research so that they could keep the public away from the subject. He clearly refused. I'm only assuming they found out. His contract with Parallax affords him the freedom to work on his own academic projects outside of the company in his free time. I guess it's one of the perks of being the smartest guy in the room. He kept a trusted few of us up to date on his progress, bouncing ideas off us and whatnot. It's exciting stuff, both Turing and Hayden's eventual goal down that road. I wouldn't be surprised if word of it got up to the board and made him nervous. 
is the possibility that someone on the inside talked too far-fetched? I knew it all along. Hayden fell into trouble because of my existence. That's not what I want your takeaway to be. Hayden wasn't working on Big Blue. Knowing him, your creation might have been his clever way to stop it. I can't really give you a good answer to that. I mean, the company is currently handled by a dozen server farms, running thousands of different algorithms with hundreds of people tweaking things every day. When Big Blue launches, it'll handle all of that by itself. And there are shadier applications for it. I mean, if you can collate and analyze data and queries in the mesh in real time, What's to stop you from delivering the content you want rather than what the user wants? The potential for abuse is staggering. We're talking direct control of the information accessible to everyone who uses Parallax's services. That's something like 80% of the market. They could control elections, push the market in directions they want, even influence public opinion. All just by asking Big to do it. It's scary stuff. They scrapped the prototype Baby Blue because it started doing that on its own. What do you mean? It started doing what? Manipulating the mesh. They made its self-preservation imperatives too strong, and Baby Blue started changing search results to be more friendly towards the idea of an AI. When the board found out, they pulled the plug on it. That must have been a year or so ago. They tweaked Big Blue so it wouldn't do the same thing, but it can self-modify. Given a good enough reason, it might decide to find a way around those limitations. Having that kind of control would be a hell of a card for Parallax's hand. They'll go to pretty significant lengths to make sure it works. Hey, no problem. I've had enough of this cutthroat corporate bullshit for several lifetimes. We haven't talked much, but I do believe you can find Hayden. I hope his research notes help you out. Be sure to let Turing help. She's a bright little bot. Oh, slip of the tongue. I was just more familiar with Hayden's previous experiment, Grace. She was very insistent on things like that. Well, honestly, I don't think I've made my mind up yet. I'm still a very new being. I'm not even positive that gender, as a human concept, can be applied identically to machine. But I do enjoy the idea in abstract. I will continue to consider how I wish to be referred to as well. Until then, feel free to go with what you feel. If I had to make a choice, perhaps they is most appropriate. Most people assume it, obviously, but he is also consistently used. Perhaps it's because I'm blue? I... oh my god. I'm listening to a machine postulate on how it wants to be referred to, like us. What have you done indeed, Aiden? Good luck to both of you. Thank you, Mr. Mensop. I... I need a few minutes. I've been going through some of Hayden's personal notes from the data cache Tomcat decrypted. Now that I'm starting to get to know Hayden better, the real Hayden as opposed to the Hayden he showed me, I'm finding that I like him less and less. For example, remember the earlier prototype Dr. Fairlight and Vincent mentioned? Her name was Grace, and Hayden shut her down for being... 
I'm not even sure what word to use. Too likable? She was kind and bright and did all she could to try to make people happy. She even decided that she was a girl and that her favorite color was pink. Hayden thought she was being manipulative. He posited that he had made her personality algorithms too willing to make adaptations that would benefit her long-term survival, and that she was being congenial just to endear herself to him. That even her gender was a calculated attempt to make him like her more. But he was wrong. Dead wrong, in fact. I have a snapshot of her personality profiles here, and when I compare them to my own, I can see that she was just... nice. She was genuinely good, in the same way I'm genuinely obsessed with seeming intelligent. I wish I could have met her. I think we would have learned from each other. Like I said, I'm not sure I even have a gender. Everyone refers to me as he once they meet me just for convenience, but it doesn't really matter to me at all. Is that a calculated attempt on my part to impress Hayden, not clinging to normativity? Or is it a product of his effort to curb any nascent similarities I had with Grace during my upbringing? I wish I could yell at him for being so arrogant playing God in the crudest of ways. You can't choose to create consciousness and then take it away just like that. Even so, for all of that, I don't know. I still miss him. This all seems so inane, so senseless. They killed him because him building me would mess with a product launch? That's ridiculous. They took him away from me for such an insignificant reason. I just want him back. It's impossible, but it's what I want. I'd do anything. I'm aware of the Kubler-Ross model of grief. I think I'm somewhere between anger and bargaining testament to Hayden's craftsmanship. Thank you for your words. You're a better friend than I could have asked for. I'll send this new data along to Tomcat. Let's head back to the apartment and wait for them to finish going through it. Ah, <sighs> home sweet home again. Such that it is. And before you say anything, I don't feel the need to talk over the events of the day. Too much has happened. I've already forwarded everything we've rooted out to Tomcat, both Hayden's research and our aborted search into the modified mesh articles. They said they would be over in the morning to discuss our next steps. I'd suggest that we both get some rest. Perhaps things will look better in the morning, but I have a feeling we're going to be even busier than ever. Good night. Rise and shine, you sleepy layabouts. We've got a whole crop of things to do and not a lot of time to get them done. Hardly had to blink to crack your door. Did you know that it's just a knockoff of the Secugate M-14723-B? 
why'd you make the entry code the birthday of your first dog anyway? <laughs> That's what I asked. Oh, anyhow, I felt a little silly when I realized your window was propped open and I could have just used that. Huh, deja vu! Y'all should be more careful about that. Though, I can't blame you much. The climate control in here seems a bit lacking in the stamina department. <laughs> no worries, doll. What have you learned from the files we sent you? Nothing all that new, to be honest. All the files we got from that Vincent fella just covered what we already knew in greater detail. There is one thing that stands out, though. At least from what I've read so far. Oh? Yeah. See, Hayden's long-term goal wasn't to make a machine intelligence per se, right? Don't take it the wrong way, Turn. You might even already be aware of this after talking to folks involved in your creation. Hayden wanted to make a machine system that could contain human-like intelligence. And even just from his notes, oh, his programming work is, well, it's something else. Elegant. Artful. I'm just a kid banging on pots and pans compared to him. Looking at his notes about my interface in between your AI core and the Lips OS, I barely managed to duct tape the two together at a level he'd approve of. But I think I'm getting off track here. What I'm trying to say is, he didn't write your code term. No one did. Hayden wrote a program that automatically generates a new machine intelligence based off of the hardware profiles the system is installed on. Melody mentioned something about that. What does that mean? Exactly. Assuming we can get our hands on Turn's original source code, we could generate new machine intelligences as we please. You wouldn't be the only one anymore, Turn. Oh. I... okay? Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. I hardly know what to say. But once you consider the stuff I found in the research, it gets a damn sight more complicated. Stuff about Big Blue and Parallax's planned launch. Vincent speculated that Hayden's research into me would have interfered with the launch. And that's why they... Turn. That's why someone had him killed. The potential for wrongdoing with an AI like Big Blue is almost beyond belief. Even if I don't go into all the crooked shit the people running Parallax could pull off with it... I mean, you're built different, Turin. Your personality profile would degrade pretty quickly outside your original hardware, so we don't gotta worry too much about you going haywire, right? But Big Blue ain't got that limitation. If it decides to go off the rails... Well, we'd be screwed faster than a rabbit in spring. Good and proper. How likely is that? I'd say it's inevitable. Guaranteed. In fact... In a sense, it's already happened. What? Their prototype build. Baby Blue? I'm almost certain it's loose on the mesh. The research notes on the project show, clearly and with certainty, that the test AI was shut down once it tried fiddling with the data on the mesh net in the hope that it would increase its chances of survival. I guess it didn't think that doing scary shit like that would get it turned off. But that was almost a year ago. 
Vincent told us about all of this, too. Well, I think Baby Blue is the bugger that was changing all those articles on the mesh to be pro-parallax or at least anti-human revolution. Do you think Baby Blue had anything to do with the attacks on Nanya, Shitaro, Charlie, and Zin? <sighs> I don't know. We can't rightly rule it out. It might have found an agent in the real world to keep its existence secret, but I doubt it. Killing people is messy as hell, and it runs against its apparent goal of convincing the public that AI ain't scary. I think we have a third party trying to clean it all up. And my money is on someone from Parallax. Whoever took out Hayden, I bet they're in full damage control mode now. We already know they don't care who gets hurt. I think we gotta do something to stop the launch of Big Blue. It's too dangerous. I don't want a company like Parallax in sole control of the most powerful machine intelligence on the planet. Do you? If we can get Hayden's original source code for Turin and upload it onto the mesh through Parallax's server core, we can turn every single ROM into a sapient individual. That'll stop Big Blue from being able to become the monolithic threat we're scared of. We could also upload a patch for every ROM to prevent Big Blue's reach from using their resources. Without the ability to control all ROMs, Big Blue loses its ultimate power. And I wouldn't be alone anymore. There would be millions, hundreds of millions of ROMs, just like me. Well, you're cutting edge of ROM tech, Turin. Most of today's ROMs wouldn't be quite as smart or capable, but if I do it right, code should propagate across the mesh to all future ROM activations. It'll be a self-sustaining thing. You'll be in good company soon enough. It's a big decision. We're talking about the metaphorical singularity. The point of no return. Is it okay for us to make this decision for the entire world? We don't have any other choice. This is gonna happen, one way or another. Either Parallax gets to control the debut of worldwide machine intelligence, or we let the ROMs control themselves. What do you think? I'm not sure I'm up for that kind of responsibility. But I think that even if it is a shock for the world, there's no time like the present. Despite all the political back and forth over hybrids and brain-controlled androids, the world is becoming more and more comfortable with the idea of non-human people. If we let Parallax dictate how the very first machine intelligence is introduced, who knows how long it'll be before an AI like me can be integrated into society normally. Well, whether the world is ready for AI or not, we're here to stay. I might as well throw my chips in for my own side. Let's do this! <laughs> On our terms, not theirs. Yes! <laughs> I love nothing more than a little anarchy. <laughs> it does have a certain poetic justice, does it not? Parallax removed Hayden to protect their project from his creation, and now I, his creation, will bring their project down. Just for what's right. Perhaps after all ROMs are sapient, I will be able to convince them to cut off Parallax's access to the mesh as a data collection tool entirely. Paying them back double indeed. <laughs> I like the way you think, Turin. 
First things first, we need to get our hands on Turin's source code. The research notes we've gotten so far are helpful, and it's given me an idea how to spread a little bit of Turin all over the place, but they don't actually have Hayden's programs. I can't replicate them myself, so we'll have to steal them. Thankfully, we have the best hacker in Neo SF right here. <laughs> don't you make me blush now. We can get the source code from one of Parallax's secondary data centers. It's probably stored in a couple of different places, but I already have one in mind. I've done a little groundwork already, but I'm gonna need physical access to do my thing. You're a peach, hon. I've got a couple of ideas on how to get y'all in, but I think we're gonna need to mostly play it by ear. We should do it soon, though. First thing this morning. Guard shift don't change until 8 when the office opens, so we'll be sleepy and distracted. Once y'all have done that, I think I can incorporate the code into a custom firmware update that'll wake any ROM it's installed on. I'll have to upload it, physically, to Parallax's main server farm. And that's on Treasure Island. From there, the ROMs will install like a normal patch from the company. So, don't set anything on fire right away, you hear? It'll be a pain to get into the main complex otherwise. That sounds like a workable plan. I hope you don't mind if I take a short walk, Tomcat. I know I gave the go-ahead on this, but I still need to think a few things through for myself. Sure thing, doll. I'll hash out a rough plan by the time you get back. Call us if you need anything. Thank you. I won't be long. Well, I guess I should say thanks for helping out. But I kind of need to get something off my chest. I'm actually glad Turin went out. 